You are tuning in to the Pop Culture Retrospective Podcast. This show is dedicated to the memory of my big sister, Rebecca, a fan of all things pop culture, particularly of the people, places, and things that defined the 80s, 90s, and early 2000s. Welcome aboard this pop culture time machine. I'm Amy Lewis. This is episode number 93, revisiting classic McGruff the Crime Dog PSAs from the 80s and 90s featuring McGruff himself and the executive director of the National Crime Prevention Council, Paul Del Ponte. On this episode, I had a chance to meet with one of the most iconic characters for me and my sister's childhood and talk with him and Paul about the enduring power of these PSAs and how their messages still resonate today. Enjoy. Thank you, everybody, for tuning into the Pop Culture Retrospective Podcast. Today, I am my my child of the '80s is going is going crazy right now because I am joined by a few folks from the NCPC, which is the National Crime Prevention Council. Uh, Paul is the executive director of the NCPC, and he and McGruff, who is also here, work together to spread awareness about fighting crime. And if you grew up in the 1980s and 1990s, like I did, then you may remember those infamous commercials where a dog in a rumpled trench coat said, you don't know me yet, but you will. Since then, McGruff the Crime Dog has taught millions of people, like myself, that the police can, cannot fight crime alone. Crime prevention is everybody's business and everyone can help take a bite out of crime. Through television commercials, comic books, live appearances, and more, McGruff has encouraged Americans to take common sense steps to reduce crime. So, Paul and McGruff, thank you so much for coming to the show. Well, thank you, Amy. Yeah, this is what a what a treat this is. I certainly remember being visited by McGruff himself when I was in elementary school back uh, back in the 1980s. So, this is a real treat for myself and for the listeners. Could you guys tell me a little, tell me and the audience a little bit about uh, yourselves and the NCPC? Sure. Why don't I start and then McGruff can fill in so, uh, some blanks. But um, I get have the great pleasure of being executive director of the National Crime Prevention Council. So I get to work with McGruff every day. And um, one of the things when I uh, came on board a, a little more than two years ago, my most important mission was to in- introduce McGruff to a new generation. Mm-hmm. And we are busy doing that. We're excited to be here to sort of look back at what um, started McGruff back before uh, anybody knew who he was, as well as bringing you up to speed on what McGruff is up to now. So over to McGruff. All right. Well, it's sure, sure been a great uh, 44 years almost here. That in, in July is where we did kind of get started back in 1980 but it's just been a wonderful association working with great people such as uh, all across the nation and my great friends at the national crime prevention council nice and how is is your um is your gray uh, jacket still 40 is that 44 years old as well well we went through several uh trench coats over the years and uh, now with uh, many of the public appearances you know i have a white shirt and tie underneath it so we're kind of we updated just a little bit there oh very nice yeah and and the toughest thing was getting that jelly donut stain off it Um, Mm. i'm sure and the pastrami sandwiches (laughs) (laughs) i bet my goodness okay well yes so as people listening to the show certainly finally remember these these infamous PSAs, which certainly taught us a lot as kids and continue to teach uh, a new generation. We're going to kind of go through some of those. And uh, McGruff and Paul are going to kind of give us uh, a little bit of information about the the PSAs, any notable moments, anything that they remember about those. So is there anything that you two wanted to add before we got started? Um, No, just that, you know, our our work, the National Crime Prevention Council, McGruff's work really depends on the people out there who are listening. And Mm -hmm. it was it was that way at the very beginning. And it's that way today. And um, just appreciate all the volunteers, all the people who um, wake up each day ready to take a bite out of crime. 
all we got to do is remember that uh, all crime needs is a chance and working together, we can really make a difference in our neighborhoods, our communities and all across the nation. Nice. Awesome. Well, that's, I think, certainly a message that everybody can can get behind. All right. So for our very first PSA, I believe this is the one that is from um, 1980. Yes. Um, and this one is entitled Jenny. So I'm going to pull that up here in just a second. Uh, that's Jenny. But that's not Jenny's dad. If she gets into that car, you may be looking at Jenny for the last time. I'm McGruff, the crime dog. Let me show you something. See that playground? A lot of kids there. Every day in this country, 60 kids disappear. Some run away, but a lot are kidnapped by strangers or even by people they know. Almost 20,000 kids a year. 20,000 kids, one kid at a time. Maybe your kid on your street, just like Jenny. You know, your kids can learn to protect themselves against crime at home, at school, on the street. Hey, nice going, Jenny. She's going to tell her folks about this. And you can write them a gruff. Learn how to keep your family and your community safe and help uh, take a bite out of crime. All right. Well, that was the first one. Any uh, any thoughts on that first PSA? Well, you know, it brings it, back a lot of memories. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, you know, it's just as relevant today as it was then, sadly. And so you, you've got to be diligent. Um, just a little side note, a couple of years ago, Seth MacFarlane, included that PSA with a little funny humorous twist in, hmm. an in the Chris Holiday episode of The Family Guy. And um, it was part of what we started to do to get a new generation to look at McGruff again and start with some of those very old, not um, old, but still relevant, important messages. So, you know, kids out there, somebody asked you to get in the car, don't. Right. Yeah, you're you're absolutely right about the relevant uh, perspective. And I've certainly I have two children. I have a seven year old and a nine year old, and we've been over this many, many, many times. And sort of rewatching these has kind of reminded me that I actually might pull these out uh, to show them, because that's certainly a concern that I have um, as a parent. The only thing you have to do is explain what a PO box is, because that goes right over <laughs> your head. <laughs> yes. The yeah. message still works. <laughs> PO box, PO boxes have gone away, but uh, the message is still important. Yes, most most definitely, most definitely. We'll go on to our next one here, which is stop a crime. That's how it all began. Yeah, that was an early one. You know what I think? I think you forgot to lock your door. It's a funny thing. A lot of people do that. They uh, they forget. That's too bad because. All crime needs is a chance. Don't give it the chance. Like, uh, light up your doors. <laughs> Lights make burglars nervous. And make your windows secure. Say, I understand you're going to Peoria next week. While you're gone, have a neighbor keep an eye on your house. You know, pick up your mail, keep the place looking lived in, and use a timer to turn lights on and off. Hey, fudge brownies. <laughs> and me on a diet. Oh, you don't know me, see. It's my job to teach you to protect yourselves. Make it your job to learn. Write to Box 6600 Rockville, Maryland. And one more thing, lock your doors. That's an easy way to uh, take a bite out of crime. That, I definitely remember that one. And I wonder if, if that was filmed in Illinois because Peoria is, uh, is a city in Illinois. Yes, it is. But uh, no, it actually wasn't. It was kind of a way to get people to uh, have crime prevention tips such as, you know, turn on their lights, securing their windows, their doors and asking neighbors to kind of watch the house. And it was kind of the first part of our uh, getting ready for neighborhood watch and not giving crime a chance. Well, again, I think that's still certainly um, relevant today. And it kind of makes me think of, you know, maybe if... Uh, the uh, the family in Home Alone would have watched this. Perhaps, you know, their house wouldn't have been robbed in the film Home Alone. You, you've got to wonder if uh, that, that Kevin McAllister must have paid really close attention to the McGruff PSAs. Yes. Yeah. The, the, yep. The turning on the lights and the timer. That's very true. That is very true. Nice. Well, that is a that is a fun one. 
The next one we have, I think, was, ooh, this is a good one. Um, United for a Stronger America. Uh, Mrs. DeBruzzo, I'm, I'm here with the me? Neighborhood Watch. We we for, yeah. Yes! Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. We won! I, I'm signing dreams. up people for the Neighborhood Watch. You made I, our dreams come true. Do you have your cameras here? <laughs> Where are you yes. going, Mr. McMahon? I, I'm going to check with the lady next door. Are you, yeah, you going to get the check? The check? Start a Neighborhood Watch. It's just one of the many ways you can help make America stronger. To find out how, call or log on for this free guide. Ed McMahon, I mean, does it get more 80s than that? There yes. you go, there you go. I think McGruff has fond memories of that one. You know, what was interesting about that PSA, just kind of make it short here. Of course, Ed McMahon was Johnny Carson's sidekick for all those years. Yes. But he had a television show called Star Search. And when the lady opened the door... She thought she was going to be on the show, and that's why she was all excited. And he was around signing up people in his neighborhood to be part of Neighborhood Watch. Nice. Wow. I wonder how the NCPC worked on get, uh, getting him to uh, help out with some of the PSAs. That's pretty cool. We, we've been fortunate over the years to have a lot of good friends uh, who, who, who uh, volunteer to help us, and that continues to this day. Nice. That's great. Yes. And what a, that's a pretty, yeah, pretty big name for the, uh, the 1980s. And I remember, I think it was he, I think he also did um, Publishers Clearinghouse too with the, uh, like, kind of like a, sort of like a lottery ticket type thing yeah. where you could, I think, fill something out, maybe win money or something like that. I want to say. That sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah, he yeah. did. All right. Back to the next one here. Hey, McGruff here. See that guy? He's stealing that bike. Now, see that lady? Bike theft. She's calling the cops. This is Mimi Marth, part of the Eyes and Ears Patrol of Hartford, Connecticut. There's 126 of them, regular people like you and me, working together against crime. Here's another one, Albert Bell. Yesterday, it was his turn to patrol. Halfway down a block, Albert sees a strange man nosing around a Barnett's basement window. Gray jacket. So, Albert calls the cops, fast. And the cops pick the guy up, fast. Way to go, Albert. You know, when it comes to preventing crime, people like Mimi and Albert really make a difference. So could a person like you. Find out more. Write to Box 6600, Rockville, Maryland, and help uh, take a bite out of crime. Another classic, must be 1980s. Uh, PSA there. Yes, it was. It looks that way, yeah. No, it was in nineteen eighty, early 1980s, and again, that was uh, community crime prevention and kind of getting neighborhood watch and getting people involved in their neighborhoods. And this, these were actually two people from Hartford, Connecticut that uh, were involved, and in, they are part of the PSA. Nice. Yeah, aren't there, do you all still, I think it's um, NCPC, do you all still do the um, like signs that people can have in their neighborhoods that say neighborhood watch. Is that through you all? That actually is through the national sheriff's association. Oh, okay. And we are, we um, are talking to them now. Uh, we've always worked in close collaboration with the sheriffs as well as other units of law enforcement, but we're talking to them now about updating neighborhood watch and mm. really making it more relevant to the 21st century because you know, unlike those big bulky phones or whatever those things were back then, we yeah. now have um, smartphones and home cameras and other things. So we really want to make Neighborhood Watch ready for uh, 21st century technology. Nice. Yes, I was going to comment on those radios. They looked like a, almost kind of like a CB, uh, <laughs> CB wa uh, walkie-talkie. It basically type. was. Mm -hmm. Nice. Oh, man. that's Because they kind of had a... a, a neighborhood uh, watch network where they used uh, CBs talking to one another. Then they reported it to the law enforcement. Okay, nice. Yes, one one fun fact I learned in doing my um, podcast is that Radio Shack, which is, I think is pretty much completely defunct now, they kind of gained a lot of popularity. And at one point, the vast majority of their sales was actually uh, CB radios. So there's a fun fact for you on a on a Tuesday afternoon. The next one, I think we're going to just change the order here a little bit. Um, the next one is the gill straps, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Yeah, one of my favorites. Okay. You know, the gill straps aren't really moving. They're being robbed. 
these crooks know the gill straps are out of town, so they're trying to move the gill straps permanently. They figure they look like movers, they act like movers, so who's going to know? The Joneses. They know. Dad, aren't the gill straps in Toledo? I think they're being robbed. Should we call the police? Call the police. See, the Joneses know if they don't tell the cops now, the gill straps will have to tell them later. Uh, hello, this is Harry. Meanwhile, Jones. these fellas are eating lunch oh, about a block away. R21. Hey, hot pastrami. That looks very good. 10 for. How about that? Know what it takes to stop a crime? Your help and your neighbors. Find out more. Write to Box 6600 Rockville, Maryland, and help uh, take a bite out of crime. And Paul, you mentioned this was one of your favorites. Why? Yeah, why is I, I, I like the humor involved, and then and also, you know, every time I see it, uh, you know, if you think McGruff can take a bite out of bite out of crime, you should see him a bite into a pastrami sandwich. So <laughs> we've we've had some good ones over the years. Yeah, but Paul and I like again, pastrami. An, import, an important message, just as important today as it was then. Yes, it is. And it shows neighborhood involvement, getting people to actually, if they see something, they can actually call it in. And that's what we want people to do is get involved because they can be the eyes and ears for law enforcement because they can't always be in the neighborhoods all the time. Yeah. And is that when you, is this, was it this PSA, McGruff, where you first fell in love with pastrami sandwiches? <laughs> oh, we, uh, Paul and I enjoy those quite often. <laughs> Excellent. Yes, and I also loved the the rotary phone. Certainly, calling the police used to take a lot longer than it than it does now. So we can right. certainly appreciate appreciate that um, technology uh, innovation. That is for sure. And the next one is I can't fight without you. Here he comes. Whoops! Ooh. I beg your pardon. Ralph Edwards. Yeah, that's right, McGruff. It's the 10th anniversary of all of us working together to prevent crime. McGruff, this is your life. What a thrill! Years ago, you began teaching people to get involved with each other and the police. Remember this? You helped us start a neighborhood watch. Our antennas went up and crime went down. Hey, Phil! How you doing, McGruff? <laughs> Later, you helped kids stay drug-free. Let me get wasted. Why don't you get real? I've got a better idea. Why don't you get lost? Hi, McGruff. Hey, McGruff. You guys made me proud. Come on, everybody. It's been a great 10 years, but there's more to do. Clean up neighborhoods, make drugs disappear. How do you start? Write for my free booklet. Now, everybody say, take, take a, a bite out of crime. Crime dog McGruff, this is your life. Couldn't do it without you. Oh, that was, I don't remember that one. Yeah, that was the 10th anniversary in 1990. And, of course, Ralph Edwards, for many years during the 50s and 60s, had a television show called This Is Your Life. And he had, uh, he they went to personalities and kind of by surprise and had studio audience. And they brought in people from their past. And this was, they went over some of the people who were in the early PSAs. Nice. Okay. Yeah, I remember that show. I vaguely remember that show, but yeah, I definitely don't remember this uh, this PSA. It's a good one. All right. And then I think we're going to, um, we are going to watch a more recent uh, PSA. And this is, yeah, this one is the most recent Think Again from 2023. Think buying fake products is harmless? Think again. Think fake cosmetics are tested and safe? <laughs> Think again. Think that medicine you can buy off social media is high quality? Hmm. Think again. Counterfeits are made in unsafe conditions, potentially using hazardous and even lethal ingredients that could harm you and others. Each year, billions of dollars worth of counterfeit products are sold in the U.S. <sighs> I smell big crime. Think about it. If you don't know where the products came from, how could you know where the money goes? You're smart. Buy smart. Go for real. Okay. 
Wow, that right. was a much much different look than the a uh... much different look. As you could see, um, McGruff is in 3D animation because that's what kids today are growing up with. And mm -hmm. you know, we we live in a little bit more complicated times and than we did in the 80s. And so the messaging is around you know real problems that people face around the sale of counterfeit goods. It is part of a series. We uh, we have McGruff back in the studios now. Uh, working on a new one, which is a companion of this, taking direct aim at the dangers of fake pills containing fentanyl, which are killing kids and young adults at an alarming rate. Yeah, it's it, it's amazing, and I didn't realize the other kind of counterfeit items too, and how that was can be filled with dangerous um, ingredients and chemicals too. That's dangerous ingredients, and then the other thing to keep in mind is that criminal enterprise relies on money. And if you follow the money, it oftentimes leads to fake products. So you might think you're just getting a good deal on a fake purse, but you're putting money into the hands of a criminal. Wow. Yeah. That was a very good point. Very good point. Yeah, what we try like to encourage to do here, Amy, is uh, be careful of counterfeits because they can look like the real thing, but uh, yeah. they may not be. So always be, if it's too good to be true for a price or whatever it usually is. So always stick to the reliable brands. Yeah, definitely. So what would, so thinking back to when McGruff started, you said, you know, 44 years ago, which is pretty incredible. How would you say um, that, that he sort of evolved in his message? Well, I think one thing about McGruff uh, is the message relevance remains just as important now as it, as it did back then, um, that it really is individual citizens who can take action and, and, and help things. And that's what our work at the National Crime Prevention Council is all about. Um, McGruff, you know, as great as he is, he's not a superhero. He can't do it alone. He needs your help. And yeah. just like you said from the very start, it, it's his job to teach you and it's, it's your job to learn. And we see that every day. I mentioned fentanyl. I mean, one of the things that just uh, saddens me and warms my heart at the same time, we work with so many families who suffered the tragedy, the ultimate tragedy and the loss of a child through this dangerous trade yeah. in, in drug deals. And throughout it all, they came up to me and said, hey, McGruff taught us to be safe. We're, we want to help you teach others so the same thing doesn't happen to their families. And so there's wow. a whole citizen movement of, People who grew up at McGruff and want to pay, want to pay that forward to the next generation. Wow, that's amazing. That is so cool. Wow. Well, you know, I've always said over the years, you know, crime prevention is everyone's business. It, a crime is not a law enforcement problem. It's a community problem. And that's why mm -hmm. it takes a lot of networking with all kinds of people. And uh, whether it be people in the neighborhoods or schools or businesses, you know, the media, we all work together to help take a bite out of crime. Hmm. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. That is a really good point. Yeah, if you're involved in, in paying attention, then we can all sort of make a difference in our communities. I like that. I like that a lot. Um, and so, what, McGruff, what does your work sort of look like these days? Are you still, you know, going to elementary schools and, and visiting, or what does your work look like? Yes, uh, we make public appearances uh, whenever requested, we visit schools, we're in parades, we do, uh, well, if they if there's a business or something that likes to have uh, uh, the celebrity come, you know, McGruff can come, we sign autographs, and we've done uh, projects on, uh, of course, PSAs, radio, television, and personal appearances, and uh, we just made a great one down at the uh, raceways down in uh, Daytona Beach. Wow. Recently. What, what did you get to do there? Well, we, we uh, work with NASCAR driver Joey Gase, and he has the Race Against Crime car out on the Nashville circuit. It was down in, we were down in Daytona, and we we're down in Atlanta the week after. And, uh, you know, it, it's important to reach all segments. And, uh, you know, getting NASCAR fans is a great fan base uh, mm -hmm. of people who care about taking a bite out of crime. Nice. Oh, that's great. I'll have, to, I'll have to look up that, Carl. I'll make sure to maybe I'll try to um, find a, a link to that and I'll put it in the. Uh, and and he, here you've, you've got, you can get them right. Uh, 
go to mcgruff.org and we have toy car versions and nice we also did a taping last year uh, with joey gase mcgruff at the races you can see that on youtube nice okay yeah i'll have, i'll try to find like a big um, picture of the cartoon and put that um um into the show notes um and i guess one question i have for you for paul and uh, mcgruff also too is is there um any when you think back over your time um with the uh the ncpc is there a, a story or event or something that you've done that's been particularly um memorable or touching oh so so many um yeah. uh, you know I, I think one of one of the things that's always special is to get to go to a classroom and and, and see children uh interact with mcgruff and just how seriously children take the messages and believe in it and and that's always heartwarming and um i guess uh, a, a big a big moment for me is every time i meet with families who've had a ch child who's been a victim of some sort of crime and yeah. working with the uh, alumni of mcgruff fans you know as, as you pointed out and mcgruff pointed out we we put some you know we always try to put real people in the commercials and um you know i, I was uh, uh, a while back reconnected with someone who was 11 and was in her uh, mcgruff commercial uh, mm -hmm. rosanna bream talking about gun violence and she came forward and she wants to volunteer because the same concern she had as a child about um being shot being shot in school are just as relevant today and she wants to make sure that her kids are safe wow that's amazing that is that is very profound. Wow. Yeah, just as Paul mentioned, though, I could tell story after story of uh, wonderful people and the events we got to work with. Uh, just briefly, I'd like to just share. There was a, I was at a um, program at a mall, and shopping mall, and this uh, grandfather came up to me and he says, "Do you realize?" Uh, the messages you give, how important they are. And I said, well, we always like to keep, uh, you know, our community safe. And they said, well, my wife became very ill and uh, she collapsed on the kitchen floor. And my granddaughter went immediately and called 911. And because of the quick response, uh, my, my wife is still alive today. And oh, he no. asked her, what did you learn to do that? And he says, well, McGruff visited our school and he taught us how to use 911 and the, the importance of it. And I just, you know, that's just one of many, many stories we could share. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's, that is wonderful. That is amazing. It's um, a lot of things I've learned about a lot of different things on the show. And I think having, a, having such a fun, warm character like McGruff is so crucial because it really helps, um, kids, I think, absorb, absorb the information, find somebody that they feel like they can, they can trust and, um, and learn from and, and open up to. So, um, that's, that is such a, uh, a, a wonderful story. And I'm glad that there's been so many positive interactions that you guys have both had. It, it's quite an experience and you really get to see the depth and level of which, uh, McGruff has made an impact in people's lives. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. And I could, you know, if I could certainly, if somebody were to, you know, hold up a bunch of pictures of different characters from the, the 1980s, I could certainly name um, McGruff without a, without a problem. So I think that's certainly very telling of the, of the staying power of, um, of McGruff. It's, it's, he's a pretty, pretty powerful dog. That's uh, putting it, putting it lightly. A true American icon for sure. Yes. Yeah. Um, You're still working today. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, that is amazing. That is, um, that is a joy for this uh, uh, kind of borderline Gen X or uh, elder millennial to hear. So um, we, we, uh, we certainly appreciate that. Um, so what's kind of next on your um, list of things that you have going on in your um, fighting crime worlds? Well, we've got quite a few things. I already mentioned we uh, have McGruff in the studios working on a new public service announcement, taking direct aim at, uh, um, the dangers of fake pills and fentanyl. Mm -hmm. uh, we are developing new solutions to help prevent gun violence. I think for too often, we've sort of wrung our hands and, and feel that uh, it's, it's beyond our ability to do something about it, but it's really not. Yeah. When you think about uh, since the time Columbine happened, there has not been one school fire. 
There has hmm. not been one child who died in a school fire. Hmm. And there are a lot of reasons for that. It's because we have different standards for building schools to resist, resist fire. We yeah. need to start developing those same kind of standards so that schools become gunshot resistant. And we yeah. can save lives that way. There yeah. are things we can do about these problems. I already mentioned, too, we're going to revitalize Neighborhood Watch and make it relevant for the 21st century. Just imagine all you can do now with, with smart locks, smartphones, cameras. Right. And we can make our neighborhoods and our lives safer. Nice. Oh, I love that. That's great. Um, so if people want to learn more about um, the NCPC or McGruff, where should they go find that information? They can go to uh, ncpc.org and mcgruff.org. And on bo both websites, you can learn about McGruff. If you want to learn more about what we're doing and the emotional impact of fentanyl, go to liesproject.org and sign up for some of our different activities, get our information, download. You don't have to write to a P.O. box anymore. You can get it all <laughs> online. Oh, yes. I love that. Oh, my gosh. It's like the pro the process to get that information, you know, would probably take like, you know, over a week and now I can get it in five minutes, if, if, if that. So we've come um, a long way. Yes, we have. We have indeed. And I will make sure to put um, a link to all of this information um, in the show notes as well. But anything else that you want to say in, in uh, conclusion here? Well, I'll, I'll let McGruff, he always has the last word, but uh, <laughs> just, you know, for everyone listening, uh, there is still something you can do. You have the power within yourself to stop criminals. As McGruff said, all crime needs is a chance. Don't give it a chance. And McGruff, you know what they want. You know what they need. <laughs> Absolutely. We always got to close with this, you know. Uh, watch out, help out. Just as Paul mentioned, all crime needs is a chance. We need to take away the opportunity for a crime to take place. But most of all, help your old pal McGruff. Help the National Crime Prevention Council and all of our networks with law enforcement. You're very important. You're very special because you can help your old pal McGruff take a bite out of crime. Ow. I hope you've enjoyed my visit with McGruff the Crime Dog and Paul Del Ponte from the National Crime Prevention Council. They were such a joy to meet with, and I was reminded of just how poignant their messages continue to be four decades after McGruff first graced our television sets. I hope you will join me for my next episode, where we will take another look back at a fascinating facet of the 80s, 90s, and early 2000s. Until then, be kind, be safe, and hold on to your memories. Thank you for tuning in to my mama's podcast and the memories of Auntie Rebecca.